Hi there, we are Lisa and Chris. Please join us aboard our main ship 390, Cool Beans, as we cruise America's Great Loop. leave and where are we going? We just left Hammond, Indiana and we're headed to Chicago. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Are you? Looking forward to it. It's going to be a great day and tomorrow is going to be a better day because we're going to go down the river, downtown Chicago. Um, how did you like Hammond? It was nice. It was nice and warm. Enjoyed staying there. It was. It was a nice break. And lots now, of, um, oh. lots of boats there. That was a, a really big marina. Yes, it really was. I need to look up probably, I don't know, 600 slips maybe. Quite a few. All right. Well, doing a great job and we're out. Wow, this is amazing. We have been to so many of these places on land, but now we can see them from the water. There's the Shedd Aquarium and there's Millennium Park. Chicago is a beautiful city and you can really appreciate it from this view. And Chris noticed that you don't even see any cranes or construction equipment anywhere. We arrived to our protected marina and docked cool beans. We immediately jumped off to start exploring the town. The location of the marina was perfect for most of the things we wanted to do, so we walked a short bit to our first stop, lunch. Giordano's Pizza did not disappoint. Now we are off to probably our favorite place in Chicago, Garrett's Popcorn. We have been to Chicago before, so we were so excited to get back there for our popcorn fix. Garrett mix for the win. Chicago is such a beautiful city and very walkable. We headed over to Millennium Park. What a beautiful day. This is Cloudgate, also known as The Bean. So you know Cool Beans had to go see it again. Cloudgate is a 110-ton elliptical structure forged of a seamless series of highly polished stainless steel plates, which reflect Chicago's famous skyline and the clouds above. Inspired by liquid mercury, the sculpture is among the largest of its kind in the world, measuring 66 feet long by 33 feet high. Walking back to the marina and we are exhausted. We tuck in for the night knowing tomorrow is going to be such an amazing, exciting day. Travel day 100. We went 13 nautical miles from Hammond, Indiana to Chicago, Illinois. We woke up bright and early to travel the downtown Chicago River. We heard that was the best time to go, early and during the week. We had to first go through the Chicago Lock, which was only a few feet drop. Once out, it was go time. Here was our view, and I did a time lapse. Please enjoy the 30 minute trip for the next two minutes.
say this with all sincerity, this was a magical day for me. I have been looking forward to this moment for years. Chris and I took the architecture tour years ago and it was mesmerizing. We loved it. This was even better. Words cannot describe the excitement I felt. Just looking up at these buildings and seeing all of the people going to and fro. Look at the beautiful calm water and the bright sunny morning. This could not have been a better day. And we did it with three other loopers behind us. A loop enthusiast, Adam, reached out on the Loop Facebook group and volunteered to take our photos going down the river. So we were so excited to get these pictures. He's a great photographer. According to Adam, it's been told that this is the only place in the world that you can be in a boat, passing under a car, passing under a train. How cool is that? Thank you, Adam, for these pics and all that you have taken of other loopers. You don't know how much it means to all of us to have these. You have to be under 17 feet air draft to clear the bridges in Chicago. Some were a little sketchy, but Cool Beans did it. We folded down our mast. More on that later on in this episode. After the downtown section, there was some industry, but there was also some gorgeous rural areas. Also, this is where the two rivers meet. For those who can't do downtown Chicago because of their height, they will come down this Cal Sag channel. We picked up two more loopers here. We made it to the electric fish barrier. It uses an electric field to deter fish from migrating between the Great Lakes and the Mississippi River basins. The barrier doesn't actually electrocute the fish, but repels them when they encounter the strong electrical field. We head into Joliet and all six of us tie up at the town wall for a great night's sleep. Travel Day 101. We went 30 nautical miles from Chicago, Illinois to Joliet, Illinois. Our Joliet flotilla decided to leave at 645 to get through the first lock before commercial traffic picked up. So off we all went. It was a great day traveling down the Illinois River. It was much more scenic than we were expecting. Yes, there were areas of industry like this one, but it's mostly gorgeous river views. And we had three locks to go through today before arriving to our destination. So we all had a busy day. of lily pads and does anyone know what this little hut is used for? We do, but I just want to know what you think. We have started to see lots of barges and tugs now. Here is a pretty big one. Look at this cute little community of floating houses. Wouldn't it be awesome to just pull up your boat to your house and jump off?
another lock, more peaceful stretches, another lock, and we're finally at our destination marina. Travel Day 102. We went 35 nautical miles from Joliet, Illinois to Ottawa, Illinois. We stayed two nights in Ottawa, mainly to rest. I painted a few rocks and we had a planning session with a big group of loopers. In today's interesting boat information, we're going to talk about rafting to other boats in a lock. Now that we're on the inland rivers, this is something that we will be doing. In fact, we have done it in almost every lock so far. So how do you know if you need to raft? Well, the lock masters will tell you when you hail them on VHF channel 14 or if you call the lock on the phone. These locks were built mostly for commercial travel, barges, tugs, etc. So they might only have three ballers to tie off to, in which case only three boats can be on the wall and everyone else has to raft. We have rafted two wide, three wide, and even five wide. Here is a cool time lapse from Kim on Sweet Equity of how we tied up three wide. Lastly, here are a few tips. Put out fenders on the side that you will be rafting to, and if possible, radio your raft or raftee boat and discuss whose lines you will be using and which points you will be tying up. We do stern and midship. Lastly, be flexible. Things can change and we all just want to get through the lock safely. It was a beautiful morning as we traveled to our first and only lock of the day. We were now a group of 12 heading to the lock to try and time it just right to get in and down before the barges beat us there. It is so surprising how beautiful this landscape is. We made it to the lock, but did end up having to wait an hour or more before we could all get in. So what do we do? We watch for eagles. We have seen so many on this part of the river. We finally get in the lock and raft up. Five wide behind us. Right now, the river is very low. They need rain badly. You can see these tree roots are just drying up. Some trees have even fallen over. Here we are entering the town of Peru, and a loop enthusiast took these photos of us while passing through. Thanks, Jeff.
We finally made it to our anchorage for the night. We were in a very peaceful spot behind an island off the main river, and we had it all to ourselves. Here is a 360 degree shot of where we were. What a beautiful way to end the day. Travel Day 103. We went 42 nautical miles from Ottawa, Illinois to Henry, Illinois. What is your tip of the week? This week it's not really a tip, but it's just a suggestion. We, uh, we went through Chicago this week. When you go through Chicago, you have to bend their 17 feet. So we lowered our mast. Uh, most boats, many boats, when you lower the mast, they have a cradle already built onto the boat for you to rest it on. We didn't have that luxury, so we rested it on a chair which seemed fine, but it was really unstable. We took a couple of ratchet straps to hold it in place. They're not tight at all. They're just, uh, just got it secure. Got us below 17 feet. I'm not telling you this is how to do it, but this is how we did it. <laughs> well, I think it's a great tip because downtown Chicago was awesome. It was amazing. And, and this is very secure. We've been traveling with it for two days. Yep. And uh, we're fixing to Stand it back up. Great tip, honey. We love anchoring because we love how our day starts. No fenders or lines to deal with, no power or water lines to disconnect. We just pull up anchor and away we go. Isn't this a glorious morning? The water was like glass and it was sunny, but just cool enough. We saw this boat doing donuts in the river. After passing him, we realized they were stirring up the Asian carp so they could use a bow and arrow to spear them. It was an interesting sight to say the least. and I was able to get video of them jumping behind our boat. The fish are sensitive to disturbance and jump when they are startled by loud noises like boat motors. It was neat going under a bridge with a train on the tracks above us. We had a short travel day to our next destination and we had a bit of a shallow approach into the marina. We did churn up some silt but made it in just fine. This marina has the nicest folks around. We will be here for the weekend to wait out some rain. Travel Day 104. We went 25 nautical miles from Henry, Illinois to Peoria, Illinois. back aboard Cool Beans. Had a great week this week. We started off in uh, in Hammond, mm -hmm. left Hammond, went over to Chicago, spent the night in Chicago, toured the city in the afternoon, mm -hmm. a few places we'd been before. 
Uh, the next morning we left for Chicago. Well, we left Chicago going yeah. to Joliet. Joliet. Yeah. Downtown Chicago was amazing. Really enjoyed that. Um, Happy birthday to me. <laughs> It was Lisa's birthday. Best birthday ever. Um, after Chicago, we went to Joliet, and then we anchored in, was that Ottawa? Uh, Outside oh, of? Are we missing one? We anchored after Ottawa, right? Yeah, after Ottawa, and then we and then we went to... Anchored out, and then we went, then to, we went to Peoria. Peoria. Yeah. Almost 150 miles this week. Yes. Uh, it was broken up, so um, it didn't seem that that bad. Uh, tons and tons of bald eagles coming down the Illinois River. Oh my gosh. Uh, we've we've lost count. We've seen so many. It's just been incredible. Also, we're seeing a lot of juvenile and uh, second year plumage. Mm -hmm. We uh, we saw them and we just kept studying and studying and studying. We knew it wasn't a buzzard. We mm -hmm. so I finally looked them up and it's uh, second year plumage. We're seeing on a lot of these young eagles. Really amazing. It's been great. It's been a great, excellent week. We're now off the Lake Michigan. We are on the rivers and now it's just getting us to the rendezvous uh, by October 21st or before. Should uh, make it no problem. Yeah, we should make it no problem. That's about it. That's all I've got. Uh, thanks for watching. Hello to friends and family. Miss all of y'all. See everyone soon. Yep. And we'll see you next week. Word Cool Beans. Bye.